Greetings to all the golf managers and administrators out there in locked down New Zealand. I hope this finds you all well. Uh, for those that I haven't had a chance to meet, uh, my name is Mike Rondell. I'm uh, a chartered accountant by trade, but I've been involved uh, in the golf industry and golf um, committees, etc., for the last uh, 15 plus years. And, uh, and I've also been uh, helping with GMANs and the presentation of some of the, uh, the GMANs courses over the last uh, three or four years. Uh, I'm pretty average at golf, um, but I'm pretty passionate about the sport and, uh, and about uh, amateur sport in general. So the team of GMANs have asked me to, to talk to you about the financial considerations that need to be uh, thought of in relation to this COVID-19 uh, um, situation that we find ourselves in, um, clearly an unprecedented situation and something which no one really could have predicted in the, in the extent of the impact it would have on, on society in general, but certainly for us as a golf industry, um, very difficult to have anticipated something like this. And what that means is for most, if not all of us, we're not as well prepared for the implications as we would like to have been. There's an awful lot of material out there on this, um, on how to support uh, organisations, businesses, not-for-profits, etc., and financial things to consider. Um, and one of the better papers, I thought, came out actually on Friday from NZ Golf. Uh, they released a suite of material, but one of those was, was entitled Financial Considerations of COVID-19. And I'm going to use that paper as the basis uh, for this talk and for our call because I think it does summarise quite nicely just 10 key things which need to be considered in relation to financial matters uh, for golf clubs. Some of them are more obvious, some of them are things I'm sure everybody's already doing. But it's well worth having these uh, almost as a checklist, I think, as things to, of things that we should make sure we have been actually doing and doing well. And even where we've done some of them, perhaps when, when this COVID issue first arose, you know, three or four weeks back as we headed into lockdown, it's well worth getting out that information now and checking whether we still actually have it up to date. So what are some of the things that were in that paper? Well, the first one was to talk about just understanding your current situation, financial situation. And, and you know, that's something we would hope everyone's doing on a fairly uh, consistent basis. But in an environment like this, it needs to be as up to date as possible. So sitting here in late April, we would hope everybody has their March financials well and truly done. Uh, and potentially if you're using zero or other uh, systems where are more real time, I would be suggesting in the current environment, you should be looking to almost on a weekly basis run your current financial position uh, and particularly around cash flows, understanding your situation and where you're at. Uh, you wouldn't normally want to do it on a weekly basis, but in this environment, uh, it's so critical to understand exactly what's happening that I think if you can have the ability to do that, then I recommend that you do so. The other things that were picked up on in the paper, talking things like removing uh, unnecessary expenditure or deferring where you can expenditure. Uh, that's easier said than done, of course. Most golf clubs run on a pretty limited budget as it is, so I know cutting costs on a continual basis is, an, is a challenge. Unfortunately, this is not a time to be sentimental, however. There may be some costs that you've continued to incur or decisions that you've deferred because they were probably difficult decisions uh, in the past. This is the time when, unfortunately, some of those difficult decisions just have, have to be made. And whilst we want to do the best we can uh, for our members and for our staff and employees, unfortunately, in this environment, we do have to make some decisions that perhaps are less palatable than they would be in other circumstances. In relation to deferring expenditure, if you have any debt, uh, clearly the banks are currently being very uh, lenient on, on arrangements, quite amenable to discussions around deferring of, of interest or even capital payments. But also if you have lease arrangements, you have any other costs where you may be able to talk to the lessors and talk about either deferrals or in fact even forgiveness of uh, a rent for a period, uh, it's well worth having those discussions uh, to see if you can, you can defer because cash flow is king, which I'll talk about shortly. The paper outlined also a number of the government um, subsidies and support mechanisms that are in place. And if you haven't already uh, looked at those and absolutely recommend you do so, uh, there's a lot of material on those on the various government websites, but if you find that hard to determine or hard to understand exactly whether you're getting absolutely everything you should uh, from the government subsidies that are available, I do recommend you try and talk to an accountant in your club uh, or anyone who's supported the club um, uh, on the board, etc., who may have uh, been in a business or has knowledge of how these subsidies and other things work. Again, well worth just double-checking that you're actually getting everything you're eligible for. Uh, because there are various things that may be applicable to your club and you want to make sure that you've got everything that you possibly can. Workforce environment's another interesting one. Employees are a difficult uh, um, matter to deal with in this current environment. The personalities are difficult. Obviously, small teams, are most in most cases, you as managers will feel like they're almost family. And it's a difficult situation to talk with employees, particularly if you're having to do some restructuring. 
The important thing here is to make sure, again, you're taking the right advice. Um, we don't want to be doing things just on verbal agreements. You can't change people's hours legally. You can't change the terms of their conditions or ask them to take leave, etc. cetera, um, uh, really uh, without breaching or being in danger of breaching employment law. And I do recommend, again, you take advice on these matters before you actually implement anything. Um, Unfortunately, uh, we want to be supportive as we can, but in the current environment, there are likely to be a number of staff positions which are just not tenable in the short to medium term. I do recommend that if you need to go through that process, you do the best you can to keep in touch with those staff because this could well be more short-lived than we think. We may be able to come out the other side and, and need those people back on our team. So uh, anything you can do to keep in touch and keep them part of the golfing family, I think is, is well worth looking at. The paper talks about reviewing your other contracts and just making sure you're getting the best deal you can. It is a good time to do that. Uh, I know in the insurance area, NZ Golf is working with Apex on that, but there may be other areas, your power, um, there may be, again, lease arrangements, other things where talking with suppliers and seeing if you're actually on the best plan you can be is well worth having that discussion now. And if you don't ask, you don't get. So uh, in my view, uh, I'd be going through every supplier that you have contracts with and talking about their pricing, talking about the ability to halt orders, reduce costs where you can. Particularly if you've got a, um, a, a, a pro shop type environment and you're dealing with apparel providers, they're going to be hurting in the current environment. You may want to have some discussions with them around pricing options to potentially when we get back online if you're not already selling uh, or when we do reopen, have the ability to have some good pricing to help move some product. One of the key challenges that all organisations are facing in this environment is how do you retain your income? And for golf clubs, clearly green fees have just come to a halt. And even in the membership area, I know clubs are being put under some pressure from members looking for either reductions in their subscriptions um, or a, a month's worth of rebate, for example, for the time we've been in lockdown. And whilst I can understand that sentiment, and again, we want to be as supportive as we can to our members and our, our communities, the reality for many clubs is that that really is not a tenable situation. The club has continued to incur costs, and in most cases, the golf clubs don't make a lot of money uh, and, are, and are, rug are struggling almost year to year. So taking a month's worth of income out from members is not really a viable option, as much as the sentiment might be that we'd like to do that. So although it's a hard discussion, I would be recommending that before any boards or clubs uh, make decisions around that kind of decision uh, or, or that kind of discounting, that they really think about their financial implications and what that would mean for the club in the long run. There was a great white paper put out by Benchmark Golf um, last week, and one of the things it talked about was, in this environment, trying to get members to understand they really need to act more like shareholders and owners of the club rather than clients or, or members who just take a service. And if you can try and use that mentality with members, I think you'd hopefully get more buy-in to them actually thinking about the long-term consequences that will happen to the club if, in fact, the revenue declines and the club can't replace it. The last couple of points I think that are in the paper that are useful are around scenario planning and forecasting. Scenario planning, particularly at the moment where we have these various levels, and today we've heard that we're moving from level four to level three, and it looks like golf may well be back on in some form or other in level three, although not um, in, in the way we used to. And then as we move to levels two and hopefully one and out of this, I do think it's worth doing some scenario planning on what that might mean for your club. It's potential, there is real potential we will oscillate between, um, between levels, particularly I suspect levels two and three. So before we make hard and fast decisions, we want to be able to be nimble and, and be able to react when that may happen and to understand what that might mean for our members, for our staff and for the club financially. So some scenario planning around what would happen if we were in level three for say three or four weeks, uh, what would happen if we then shifted back to uh, uh, level two for a period and then back into level three maybe or then back to level two and one again just some broad scenario planning about how that might look it's crystal ball gazing but it's it's getting a feel for your boards and for you as managers around what might that mean for your club and how might you react to some of the things we've talked around around discounting or around um, members wanting discounts on their time can that really be affordable in a, in a situation where we oscillate between uh, different levels so i do really recommend some scenario planning and really try to be forward thinking. Hopefully this is more of a short term issue. If we go forward three to four months and things get back more towards what we would call normal, we may well be in a situation where this is a short term funding scenario only. So do some scenarios that are positive as well. It's not all about doom and gloom. And that leads to the last point around forecasting. It's really, really important that cash is clear and the cash flows are forecast for your golf club. 
all organisations are struggling for cash and for income. And the way we survive is to make sure we're clear about what the financial cash implications are going to be for the decisions we make. So I thoroughly recommend, if you haven't already, that you're doing cash flow forecasting. I would recommend a rolling 12-week cash flow forecast and then a further 12 to 18 month uh, budgetary type forecast should be in place. And that's just to really enable your board and yourself to make decisions around implications as this information changes, as the situation we are facing changes, you're updating your financial information and your forecast so you've got the best information available at hand to understand what those changes will mean for your organisation. And lastly, we talked about sharing and support. And that's partly what this G-Man's whole process is about. New Zealand Golf are working on this. And this is a time where, as a, as a golfing industry, we really need to come together. We need to make sure we're learning from each other, we're supporting each other as best we can. Uh, maybe that's equipment sharing, maybe it's staff sharing, maybe this is an opportunity to talk about how to get better associations and relationships with the clubs around you in, in the form of sharing costs and making sure that we're acting collegiately as best we can to make sure as an industry we're learning, we're working together and for the best interests of golf, making sure that we can all come through this as positively as we can. So that's all I've got for tonight. I look forward to talking to you all on the call on Wednesday. Take care.